Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, we have today an author interview with the sci-fi fantasy writer, Mindy Breyer. Hi, Mindy. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for coming on my channel. I'm really excited because um, I was a big fan of your first book. Uh, so if you'd like to introduce yourself and your books. Yeah, um, so my name is Mindy Breyer. Um, I mostly write um, like romantic uh, sci-fi with either romantic subplots or like a romance plot. Um, and my first book, Adrift in Starlight, uh, was a just straight romance book. Um, it's about a courtesan who is paid to seduce uh, this woman who they later find out is asexual um, and immune to all of their like seductions. <laughs> uh, so just when they're about to bail and they're like, oh no, um, they accidentally commit a crime with this woman uh, and have to go on the run together. Uh, so the book is about what happens next. Um, and then my new release, uh, which is coming out November 8th, uh, is Petrichor Blooms. And this one has more of a romantic subplot, um, but takes place in the same universe as Adrift in Starlight. It just stands alone a little bit more. And it is about um, a twin who is a farmer um, who her soldier twin is injured and she has to stand in uh, for the soldier. And they end up uh, getting sent on this um, mission to like, get information from this enemy target um, and the enemy target turns out to be this completely innocent college student who has no idea what's going on um, and also is kind of hot <laughs> uh, and then they end up uh, deserting the army and going on this adventure together so um, yeah that's that's my two books that I have out awesome yes thank you so much yeah, that sounds amazing. Um, yeah, and thank you for sending me an ARC. Um, I have not gotten to read it yet, but I really hope to very soon because I am very excited to read more about your universe. Um, it's really exciting. Um, I do, I'm wondering, are you thinking of writing any more books in this universe? I am. Um, I actually am working on um, the third book right now and I'm very close to finishing it. It's taken Ooh. me way longer than it should have. Um, but the third book, I can give you like a little sneak preview, is about um, a character that appears toward the end of Petrichor Blooms um, when they are all grown up. Um, mm -hmm. And there is some, I won't spoil it too much, but there is some like kind of, crossover into sci fantasy with a little bit of like magic and supernatural stuff going on uh, so yes I <laughs> I'm working on it it's very rough right now but I'm hoping it will be less rough in short order <laughs> okay oh that's very exciting okay awesome yay so yes um I was a really big fan of the fact that Adrift and Starlight had both an asexual character and a non-binary character. So that was really amazing to read. Um, we definitely need more sci-fi with queer characters. Um, yeah, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for doing that. Um, yeah, so I am curious, um, especially because you were talking about like you're in the middle or almost done writing. Um, what is your writing process like? Ooh, um, I'm probably going to expose myself a little bit um, <laughs> and tell you that I'm uh, unfortunately quite a pantser, um, <laughs> which is kind of both a blessing and a curse because um, it's it's really fun to be able to discover a story as you're going and like, you know, not really know how you're going to get to the end, but then you also sometimes get stuck and don't know how to get to the end. Yeah. Uh, and that is what I struggle with. So I um, am planning on my next book after I finish uh, book three. My next book, I'm going to plot out <laughs> a okay. little bit better <laughs> and not just write like a vague like paragraph of what I think is going to happen in the end and then just kind of <laughs> hope that I can get there through some sort of hand wavery. <laughs> um, but yes, I'm, I'm very much a pantser. I uh, 
tend to write an outline and then change the outline multiple times midway. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of go with vibes more than like outlined plots. Um, and yeah, <laughs> sometimes it bites me in the butt. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I understand. Yeah, when when I was writing... Yeah, I thought I was a plotter, but then I ended up changing the outline so many times during the, while I was writing the first draft. So yeah, I I get that. Um, yeah, so well, you know, different things work for different people. So and this obviously seems to work for you. So that's awesome. Um, so when did you kind of start writing or this might be a different question, but when did you really become serious about writing? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I started writing probably in middle school. Um, and when I was younger, I had a lot of like, I guess, anxiety, social anxiety issues that I really had a hard time processing um, in the environment that I was in. And so one of the things that I would do to kind of like help myself process was I would picture this like fantasy world where I had complete control over everything that happened. And I was like, okay, if I ever get too freaked out by the real world, I'm just gonna go to this fantasy world and everything's gonna be fine there. Um, and eventually I started kind of like fleshing out the fantasy world a little bit more and putting characters in it and making there be actual uh, conflict <laughs> there and that was kind of how my halcyon universe was born in its very infant form uh it's been a process of like over 15 years to world build it to where it's at now oh my god um, wow but yeah for a long time i wouldn't show anybody any of my writing i only posted like fan fiction i would never like post my original work online and I kind of got serious about querying and posting like and sharing my work with other people. Um, I think around like 2018, 2019, I finished a rough draft of what is now the Halcyon Universe series. And it was all like, it was like four plots jammed together in one book. And it was like 150K, <laughs> it was oh way too God. long. Uh, and I queried that. Uh, I'm sorry to all the agents that I've queried with that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it would never have worked, uh, but I got some really good feedback out of that. And um, I ended up realizing that I needed to split it into several different books. Mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of how the house and universe got born. That was when I started mm -hmm. um, writing these like individual books that are a little bit shorter and kind of more based around like specific romance plots rather than a huge like epic saga. And yeah, um, Adrift in Starlight kind of got surprise pulled out of that idea. And I've just been going ever since. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. Yeah, you've been writing for a long time. That's so cool. Um, was it like your dream to become a published author or? Oh, no. yes. Um, <laughs> Again, another like self-exposing moment here. <laughs> I was obsessed with Christopher Paolini and the book Aragon when I was a teenager. I was like 14 when I read it. And I think he was 14 when he wrote it. Um, right. So I like latched onto that and like I just like really hardcore like became a huge fan of both like his work. I, I wrote a ton of Aragon fan fiction. <laughs> and I also just really wanted to be him. <laughs> and yeah, like, I was really like, oh, I'm going to be this like child author who's like <laughs> just so popular at a young age. And like, haha, spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> it didn't happen. Um, <laughs> and I kind of had to come to terms with the fact that like not everyone is really good at writing right out the gate. And sometimes you have to kind of go through this process of learning how to find your voice and learning how to like uh you know turn a phrase a little bit better than the usual cliche stuff that comes out of a 14 year old's pen uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was that was a hard lesson to learn um but yeah i um wouldn't trade my journey for anything i think it's been um a really good learning experience the whole way through yeah oh good great Okay, well, I am 
interested to know, um, how did you exactly come up with the idea for Adrift in Starlight, like the the plot and the characters themselves? I'm very curious. Yeah, so that one was kind of an interesting one, because like I told you before, I've been writing in the housing universe for years. Um, but Ty and Aisha kind of didn't exist in the universe until I just like randomly pulled this idea out as something I was going to try writing like after I had shelved the 150k book that wasn't working. Um, so I like put that one aside. I was like, I'm just going to take a random idea and go for NaNoWriMo. And the idea that I had come up with was actually two ideas um, separately. Number one, I had had this idea about um, the explorer pilot Hue, uh, who ends up finding this race of like lost aliens that are like secret and nobody knows about them and has this like crisis of, oh no, what do I do? Like, I can't show these to the Imperial authorities. They're gonna like, I don't know, do experiments on them and ruin everything. Um, so that was one idea that I had. And I, it wasn't, it was kind of going to be a short story. It wasn't enough to carry a full plot. And then mm -hmm. I also had an idea of having um, like an asexual person fall in love with a, um, actually it was going to be a sex robot at first because oh. I was like, they're both like, you know, <laughs> they have really interesting relationships to the idea of like a sexual relationship. And I, eventually was like actually I want it to be a real person but that's kind of where the idea of Ty being a cyborg came from uh, oh interesting they, oh, like they were originally going to be a sex robot but then I just made them um instead a sex worker who has some like robotic components but is a fully uh realized human being with like you know a soul and feelings mm -hmm. and all of that so yeah I, I ended up kind of going with one idea to start with and then kind of jamming the other idea on behind it and it kind of worked and I was a little bit like I was never sure it was going to be finished until it was interesting um, but yeah that's I, again pantser that's how yeah. they roll I guess yeah oh hearing that little background information about Ty was that's that's really interesting um another thing I'm very curious about so in Adrift in Starlight there is um, this very unique piece of world building with dragons and kind of sort of telepathy. Um, I love that so much. Um, so I definitely want to hear about your inspirations for that and like how you came up with it. Yeah, that's been part of the housing universe for longer. Um, I think the dragons originally were unicorns <laughs> in oh, okay. the far distant past, uh, but I came up with the idea um, of teleporting dragons partially because in fantasy and sci-fi, my pet peeve is like really long travel scenes. And I deeply, deeply <laughs> hate when people like take 40,000 years to get to one from one place to another. Mm -hmm. um, cough, Lord of the Rings, cough. And um, <laughs> like, I, I wanted there to be some sort of way that people could travel around um, the galaxy and different planets without taking like a really long time to get there. And sci-fi authors have come up with so many cool things to do about that. Like there's wormholes, there's cryo sleep, there's mm -hmm. like, you know, all sorts of different things. Um, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna go full fantasy and make there be aliens who can teleport. <laughs> um, and the actual, the idea of like having dragon uh teleporting dragon aliens kind of informed the rest of the world building to some extent because once you have this world where everyone can just go anywhere they want in the universe at like the blink of an eye within certain parameters of course mm -hmm. like you have to be inside a spaceship and all this stuff but that idea that like the universe suddenly becomes really small and everywhere is in within reach um was extremely fascinating to explore and like what that would do to the galactic um like I guess government structure and I didn't really get to a lot of that in a drift but spoiler alert there is going to be more of that explored in petrichor blooms so <laughs> yes 
that was yeah aside from the romance which of course was the biggest part of the book I which I love but that the dragons were my favorite part of Adrift and Starlight that was that was a really cool very unique um yeah I love it <laughs> um so I want to switch gears just a tiny bit and I'm curious about what your you you did mention Aragon already but what are your other favorite books Oh, see, that's such a hard question because I know. I the shelf behind me. <laughs> yes, I only do. Books that I love. It's a very beautiful um, bookshelf. Um, yeah, <laughs> I will show you my the extent of my sad obsession with oh my books. Gosh. It's it's bad. It's bad. No, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh, if I'm gonna pick like a favorite of all time, um, the one that I sometimes will go to is. Prince Caspian by C.S. Lewis, um, because there is this scene in it, um, and it's really, really well done in the movie too, where they like have been out of Narnia for years and years and they're pulled back in um, and they're exploring these ancient ruins. And like, they're like, oh, this is so cool. I didn't know there was any ruins in Narnia. And then they slowly come to the realization that the ancient ruins they're standing in are the castle they used to live in. Um, and it's only been like a year for them, but it's been a hundred years in Narnia. And that scene, like, mm, like it will always get me. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just so like the chills that I get thinking about that. It's just so good. Classic. <laughs> yeah. That's a big twist. Okay. Interesting. So yeah, you, you like, Narnia, Lord of the Rings, of course, which you mentioned, Aragon. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm a big fantasy nerd. I have kind of veered a little more towards sci-fi recently. Um, I've read a lot of really good um, recent sci-fi. Like, I'm anxiously waiting for Ocean's Echo. Um, Me too, By yes. Rita Maxwell, because the first book was absolutely amazing. I loved it so much. Um, but yes. yeah, I had my roots in fantasy. <laughs> Yeah, no, that that's understandable. Yeah, I actually, I pre-ordered Ocean's Echo and I just got my notification that it shipped today. So I'm very excited. <laughs> so excited. That was one of my favorite books um, of last year. Um, yes. So, <laughs> um, so that, that also takes care of one question. I was going to ask what new releases are you anticipating? Um, so Ocean's Echo, do you have any others that you know off the top of your head? Ooh, what do I have pre-ordered right now? <laughs> um, I am absolute trash for Cassandra Clare. Uh, so I have her upcoming book um, pre-ordered. I, I forget what it is, it Chains of Something. Um, Sounds right. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that one. I think it comes out in January. Um, I am also, I pre-ordered... Um, Fault Tolerance by Valerie Valdez. Um, like, it's actually out. I don't think it's like, it's actually sitting on my shelf now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I had it pre-ordered and it came and I still haven't read it. Um, so, oops, sorry. Sorry, Valerie. Um, I will read it at some point when my library books time. aren't due. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. I think that's the only ones I've pre-ordered recently. Oh, I am looking forward to reading uh, Grey Warren by Maggie Stiefvater because Maggie oh. Stiefvater is one of my favorite writers. Her prose is just so good. So good. Very nice. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So um, I want to ask um, if you have any advice um, just about writing in general, um, cause you did mention like, you know, as a 14 year old, you're probably not going to be good at writing. So how would you, um, tell people how to get better and also any advice on like the querying journey in publishing? Yeah. Oh, I have a lot of things that I've learned Ooh, over good. the years. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, one that pops immediately to mind that kind of blew my mind when I realized it and really informs everything I've written since is something that actually Maggie Stiefvater said in one of her writing seminars that I went to. And she said um, that people will always tell you write what you know. Um, and they don't mean write about your boring life. They mean write the emotional truth that you have learned in your life 
and then put it somewhere interesting. Ooh, <laughs> um, that's really good advice. I have really, really uh, like taken that to heart in my writing. So like, you know, I'm writing in space. I obviously don't have any like knowledge of what it's like to live on another planet or like knowledge of what it's like to travel in a spaceship. But I have like life experiences like being dumped, <laughs> um, you know, leaving a very like high control religious group, things like that, that inform the emotional truth of what I write. Um, and that's something that I would love for every young writer to know, because I think that too many people like, I don't know, either like discard the idea of write what you know out of hand because it makes no sense or mm -hmm. they take it too much to heart. And I think there's a nice middle ground there. Um, my querying advice is reward yourself for rejections. <laughs> That's good advice. Uh, because rejections <laughs> really suck. And trust me, like while I was querying, I didn't even realize how depressed I was about it until I finally got the yes that I, <laughs> that I was waiting for um, from Lisa Green at City Owl, who's my amazing editor. Um, and like, I had been like, oh, I'm just, I'm handling it. It's, it's whatever, it sucks. But, uh, and then like, as soon as I got that yes, my life was just so great. And I was like, wow, oh, I don't really, I didn't realize how sad I was. Yeah, querying um, is a lot so, of emotion. Like, <laughs> if you're out there, you're querying, you're not alone. It really sucks. Um, you're not crazy for feeling like it's the worst thing ever. Uh, I um, personally, here, let me show you what I did. I made this, I'm just going to flash it really quick on the screen so no one can see my, um, actually, people that I queried, but I made this, um, like, list of querying, and then I colored it in with colorful, uh, <laughs> like, markers, uh -huh. because I like colors, and colors make me happy, and so every time I got to color in a box, even if it was a rejection, it was, like, something that made me happy. Um, I have also suggested to people that like every time they get a reject rejection, they eat a snack or like save a certain kind of thing that they really like for when they get rejected. Um, because yeah, it sucks really bad. So you yeah, kind of have to come up with an idea to like associate something good with being rejected because otherwise it's just, it's the worst. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. It's, it takes a larger emotional toll than, than you expect, I think, yeah. when you first start out. Yeah, it's really bad. Um, okay, well, that's amazing advice, um, which I I need to take because I don't do that. Um, that is great advice. Thank you very much. Um, so I think we are coming to the end of the questions that I had prepared. Um, do you have anything else you want to let us know about your book series or? Anything else that you want to touch on? Um, ooh, I will say, because I think you're going to post this a couple days from now, um, I am working on getting up a freebie short story uh, that everyone should be able to download, hopefully ooh. by the time you post this. It's called Refuge. It is something that was published originally in the anthology Wings of Renewal, um, like in 2015, but I've updated it to match some of the world building changes that I've made since. And it fits now very nicely into the Halcyon universe. And it is a preview of one of the characters uh, who is in Petrichor Blooms. Um, so if you would like to read that character's backstory and a little bit more on the dragons and <laughs> what their relationship yes. with people is like, download Refuge for free. Uh, hopefully I will be able to have it up by the time you post this. This is a uh, French time now. Yes, ooh, that would be amazing. Oh, that's very exciting news. Thank you. Yeah, um, if, if possible, I will definitely have that in the description of this video for everyone to see. Um, and I'll also have links where you can buy A Drift in Starlight and Petrichor Blooms. Uh, and, oh, I don't know if we said, when does Petrichor Blooms come out? November 8th. November 8th. All right. Mark your calendar. <laughs> it's just a couple days to go. So that's very exciting. Do you, last question. Do you have any like party planned or anything like that to celebrate? Oh, I think I'm probably just going to go to work. I have to work oh, on that. 
<laughs> my coworkers okay. are really supportive and I work in a library. So of course everyone oh, nice. there loves books. Oh, um, okay. So when I tell them that it's my book release date, I think uh, they will be very excited. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I also work in a library and I actually just ordered um, a Drift and Starlight for our library. So Yay. I'm very excited to uh, for Pet Square Blooms to come out and I'll order yes, that Yes, that's one a too. great option uh, for anyone who can't afford to buy books. Um, yes. Indie author's stamp of approval, uh, please <laughs> order it from your library. Yes, absolutely. Libraries are a wonderful resource that everyone should take advantage of. All righty. Well, thank you so much. I'm so excited that you got to be here um, and talk with me. I'm very excited that I learned more about your universe. Um, and I'm really looking forward to reading Petrichor Blooms. Thank you so much, Mindy. Thank you. Yay, thank you so much. All righty. And thank you all for watching. Uh, if you like this, please like and subscribe to my channel for more videos and maybe some more author interviews in the future. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>